Yeah. Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Over the decades, fossil fuels were and are still being used as a major energy source for households, industries and service providers in Ghana. However, due to the limited amount of fossil fuels, energy has become more and more expensive and the consequence of their consumption is having an impact on our environment and climate emitting greenhouse gases causing global war warning, warming. <laughs> well, how about a more environmentally friendly system and a cheaper way of producing electricity in 2017? We brought you a story, uh, a story uh, in Ghana's move to use nuclear power to produce electricity to augment the current stock. I can boldly tell you, by the way, that Ghana has made considerable progress in the development of its nuclear power infrastructure. Ghana Nuclear Power Program has established effective mechanisms to involve a wide and comprehensive range of national stakeholders in the relevant activities. GNPPO has already completed or initiated a significant number of studies. I have two gentlemen in the studio here with me. Dr. Vincent Agbodemibe is the manager of Localization and Stakeholder Support Center at the Ghana Atomic uh, Energy Commission. They are part of uh, actually uh, uh, another institute in in the uh, another institute at the commission. So you're welcome to the show. What he's going to do is to take us through the reasons why uh, nuclear power is a better option amongst all of them. Also here in the studio with me is Dr. Stephen Yamwa. He's deputy director of nuclear nuclear power institute of the Ghana Atomic Energy. Commission. Doc, you're welcome as well. Thank you. Let me start with you. Tell us generally about this program briefly so we can begin to look into the details. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so the program actually um, started with the, a, com a committee that was uh, set up by the uh, uh, President Kufos tenure of office to advise the feasibility of um, adding nuclear to the energy mix. And the committee recommended that government should take it seriously. So um, a management body was established called the Ghana Nuclear Power Program Organization, which is under the Ministry of Energy, um, and it is chaired by the Deputy Minister of Energy. So this body has come up with a roadmap for developing the nuclear power program, which is divided into three phases. Okay. Phase one is more of a planning phase. Developing a nuclear power program requires um, you know, developing a number of infrastructures. So phase one is to actually identify the infrastructures and to analyze and study them to know their current status. And then that will lead us to phase two, where we take concrete steps to develop the infrastructures. Okay. And then from phase two, we move into phase three, where we do the construction phase. Okay. At the moment where we are, we're at the moment we are one. almost um, at the end of phase one. At the end of phase and, one. And, and there's going to be a big report called the, the, the comprehensive report that will detail the status of uh, all the infrastructure issues. We are talking about 19 infrastructure issues. Okay, well, when, when we come, I'd like for you to break it down. Uh, I'm going to take a, a short video for us that gives us a bit of understanding. But when we come back, I'd like for you to break it down. As you mean, you were explaining this to uh, uh, people in the market or market women who don't understand all of these, your, uh, you know, bourgeois kind of statements. So you break <laughs> it down for us. But let's watch this. When we come back, we have that explanation. And then I have Dr. Um, Dr. Agbo Demigbe also take us through the reasons why we should choose nuclear power. The piping in any nuclear power plant is rigorously designed to stringent codes and is routinely inspected for optimal safety and performance. In the unlikely event of a pipe leak or break, ESBWR passive safety features are designed to prevent the nuclear reactor's core from overheating. In fact, these safety features would keep the fuel at or below its normal operating temperature for a period of time established by the regulatory authorities. If a pipe leaks or breaks, control rod blades are automatically inserted into the reactor core, stopping the nuclear reaction. The feed water system maintains a sufficient water level in the vessel to avoid activating the passive core cooling system. In the event that plant power is lost at the same time that a pipe leaks or breaks, the ESBWR passive safety systems activate to replace the power-operated systems. With no electricity to pump water into the reactor pressure vessel, 
the passive safety systems utilize natural forces to flood and cool the core. Triggered by the loss of power, heat exchanger tubes drain water into the reactor pressure vessel. As the tubes empty, steam from the reactor is drawn in and condensed. This removes heat from the reactor and transfers it to the IC pool in the upper part of the building. If the water level drops to a level below that expected for common plan events, a timed sequence of depressurization and passive cooling begins. Depressurization begins when the safety relief valves open and transfer steam from the reactor into the suppression pool, where it is condensed back into water. This relieves pressure in the reactor pressure vessel. The depressurization All right, so it might sound a bit technical, but I have all the, do the doctors here in the studio. Before we come to you, uh, Dr. Abudem McBain, let me talk to you, uh, Dr. Yamwa. Break it down to us, all that we just saw and all that you explained to us. I mean, explain to us the benefits, really, by breaking it down further, if you can. Okay, so uh, what we just saw simply is um, a form of energy that is uh, generated through splitting. And, and, I will use egg as an example. Okay. Now, when you boil egg, you, you have the white part and then the yolk, the yeah. yellow part. Yeah. Now, if you can get access to the yellow part and split it, mm -hmm. okay, then in the process of splitting, there is huge amount of energy in the form of heat mm -hmm. that is also generated. I'm using the egg as an example. Right. But here I'm talking about uranium. Okay. So in the process of splitting, there's huge amount of heat that comes out. Mm -hmm. And it is this heat that is absorbed, you know, by passing water through the reactor to absorb the heat. So with the egg analysis, which one is in uranium and which one is a reactor? No, the egg, does, is, egg, the egg is not a reactor. Okay. The, I'm using the yolk as the uranium. Okay, as in okay. we want to reach the uranium. Yes, is to, that so? you know, to split it. So here I'm talking about um, uranium atom. Okay. This is the smallest element, okay? Yes, that's so what they taught us in science class. Yeah, so but I'm, this, yet this, to this I'm yet to find out its relevance to my da daily life, so yeah, help so, us. So, so this heat that comes out is what is used to generate the electricity. How do we okay. do that? You, you, you circulate water through the reactor to absorb the heat. So the heat turns the water to steam. That okay. drives steam turbine, which is coupled to um, electric generator. And that is how the that's the, how we get the, the, power. the, the power comes out. Okay. So it is the the reactor is the facility that has been designed to cause the splitting of the atoms. Okay. So if you can sustain the the it's, 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 it's a chemical reaction. So if you can sustain it so that it one splits and then it continues splitting additional atoms. So you get the heat continuously being generated. Hmm. So you need to maintain or call it the sustain the reaction and to control it because there is no limit to the amount of heat that can be generated the heat can continuously be generated but we need to control it okay and in controlling it you need to you know evacuate the heat from the reactor i see uh, well for those who are, are, are appreciated or loved science i'm sure you can appreciate what you have on the screen but let me come to you dr agbo Demigbe, so that you can take us through i mean something that will perhaps be english Something that will perhaps be, be, be good for those who loved English in school and those who love literature. So, Doc, take us through why Ghana uh, is actually making the right choice by going for nuclear to produce power for us. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You know, there are a number of parameters that we have to assess when we compare different sources of um, electricity production technologies. One of those, those, those things that we can talk about mm. vividly is the land use. You okay. know, when you want to develop nuclear power, we need a siting or a site to actually put the power plant. And when we compare the site requirements in, in terms of size to the requirements for by other technologies, say solar or wind, we realize that nuclear power requires very small amount of land to develop a huge quantity of power for, for use. Because, okay. you know, land is a resource that we could use for any other thing. We could not just throw it away to develop or any other facility that okay. would be very small quantity that we may not actually need meet our need. Okay. So we have small quantities of land to generate huge amounts of electricity. Okay, so I see 130,000 acres behind you. If you could explain what we have on the screen for us. Yes, that is the land size that we are using for the generation of solar farm, for instance. So when you look at the far right side, you mm -hmm. could see that there is a small yellowish uh, spot there. 
That's the nuclear power. You can show us exactly where the spot is. This is the spot here, okay. which is uh, the yellowish stuff there. Mm. That is a nuclear power plant, which is generating about 26 terawatts of electricity and okay. requiring only 430 acres of land. Okay. When we want to de generate the same amount of electricity by using solar farm, for instance, then we need 130,000 acres of land. I see. And when we want to do okay. the same using wind, then we need 250,000 acres of land. So comparatively, we are actually saving our resources when it comes to land use. In I see. That is power. if we choose to go the nuclear way. Exactly. So what you need, 100, 100, uh, 130,000 acres of land to do, you need... Well, well, in 430 yeah, acres. Uh, you need about 430. Yes. Okay. I, I'm sure that's not the only benefit. That's not the only one Please we have scroll there. Up, scroll we up and let's see what we have. Sorry. All right, if you just move it up, great. Yeah. There you have it. Okay. So here we also have a comparison of installed capacity uh, per uh, some of the uh, technologies we have. This is in Europe. Look at Germany. Mm -hmm. Germany has an installed capacity of about 760. If I will come okay. down. Okay, there is a part that is mixing. Yes. About 76.7 gigawatts of electricity. Okay. But when we actually striking down using the installed capacity, mm -hmm. we can only actually have or generate 10.4 gigawatts of electricity from the installed capacity of 76.7 uh, gigawatts of electricity. Okay. So it, it shows that, here it shows that the installed capacity for nuclear is higher when we compare to other resources, say, renewable. Okay. So this is the renewable generation in Germany. So okay. we need not to invest much in generating, let's say, 76.7 gigawatts mm -hmm. and then get just a mega 10.4 okay. gigawatts from it. Any, uh, any other benefits? Yeah, there are a number of them. Now, in terms of material use, you can see that for a nuclear power plant, which is a 90% capacity factor, we need 40 megatons of steel for construction, and we need 190 meter cube of concrete. What does that mean in English, please? 40 megatons means that 40 times 10 to bar 9 tons of steel. Okay, that's yes. still a lot of mathematics. <laughs> okay, yes. let's him finish going through it so that we can wrap up with him and come to you. Back so, to you if you compare the same nuclear to wind, you can see that wind requires about 460 megatons mm. of, of, of steel and 870 meter cube of concrete. Okay. Then yeah. we can go down and down with coal. There are other factors that we consider. Okay, we let, consider take us here. through the very final one so that we can wrap it up uh, because of time. So, when we consider here, let me talk about... Um, the coal and nuclear. Mm -hmm. You know, during a normal preparation of coal power plants, mm -hmm. there is constant release of gas, uh, of, of smoke into the atmosphere. Okay. This is during a normal operation. But during the normal operation of nuclear power plants, there's no such thing. So I may actually talk about coal being another galamsey because when galamsey happened in Ghana, you could understand that all our rivers are polluted and people complain about where we get water from. But when we go coal, the air that we breathe, maybe you have to buy the air that we breathe. Because <laughs> the every, everywhere will be polluted by whatever okay. it's released. Okay, specific. so Doc, wrap it up for us. I mean, you've listed, you've listed that. So those, of, those who can appreciate math better will, uh, will get their bits. And those who can appreciate English. But wrap it up for us if you should, uh, I mean, uh, convince Ghanaians that, look, we should seriously consi consider nuclear as we are now. What will be the final word you give? Yeah, them? it is very important for Ghanaian to consider nuclear. As, as of where we are now, because all the other technologies that we have actually um, used before, thermal, we know what the effect is as of now. We have very high tariff of electricity. In the sub-region, we are one of the people who have the very high, high, high tariff. And then also, when we are able to bring on board nuclear, the fact is that we are able to actually industrialize our, 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 in our nation and talk about the new administration, talking about uh, developing a number of um, sectors, say the alumina industry, say the steel industry, the, the transportation industry. These are high energy demanding industries that need nuclear or need, need power as abundant supply and very cheap for, for use for our country. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Vincent Agbodemegbe there. He is manager of the Localization and Stakeholder Support Center uh, with the power, with the Nuclear Power Institute of Ghana, which is situated or in the Atomic Energy Commission. I have with me here Dr. Stephen Yamwa as well. Doctor, let's wrap up the conversation. If you should wrap it all up, I mean, it's quite technical, uh, uh, quite, quite frankly. But we still want to break it down for everybody else to understand. You told us the benefits of going nuclear. I mean, when should we expect that this will give us power? I, I guess that will be the biggest question for every Ghanaian. Yeah, that, yeah sure. Um, 
Nuclear is a long-term project, actually. And um, the safety requirements, safety consideration requires that you do things diligently. So um, as I said, we are just about entering phase two, and then we will move into phase three. So hopefully, um, per the program, we are looking at um, construction starting somewhere 2022, mm -hmm. 2023, thereabout, if, if we are able to uh, follow our roadmap. But uh, just to also add quickly that, you know, what we are talking about is a reliable and secure base load okay. to power our industries. And, and we are talking about for worldwide, for base load or dispatchable load, we are talking about nuclear or coal. But let me also mention that we are not calling for a shutdown of the other generation sources. We can't. We, we don't are, even have that We are the, calling the choice, for a mix that okay. gives us an advantage. But mind you, now, our hydro resources is, is, is almost utilized. OK, so it's either we are going thermal, gas, diesel, or, or coal, or nuclear in terms of our base load options. Mm. And one key advantage of nuclear is the fact that you know, nuclear fuel is used only for uh, uh, powering nuclear reactors. It doesn't okay. have any other competitors. Let, let me ask you this. How, how much power can we generate in, say, a year if we should go nuclear? So uh, nuclear power can come with very high um, uh, uh, installation. So we are talking about 1,000 megawatts. In a year? Yeah. Nuclear I mean, is that a possibility? Yeah, it's, no. I mean, so we are talking about 90% about capacity. In other words, you have in the 90% of the time, the power plant is operating at full capacity. I see. And, 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 and the, the, the remaining 10% is just about the fact that you, you, know, you run it for some time and you need to shut down and do minor maintenance okay. and continue. Okay. Aside that, under normal operating conditions, you have the power plant operating about 90% of the time at full capacity. OK. That will be your final word or uh, a less of So my I final word is that, um, yes, I mean, the people have uh, apprehension about nuclear power in terms of um, effects, we, we, I mean, the recent Fukushima is an example, mm -hmm. but nuclear is a proven technology. It is very safe and very reliable. Okay. And Ghana, we are capable and knowledgeable to operate a nuclear power. Base. Okay. Doc, thank you very much uh, for both of you passing through. Dr. Stephen Nyamwa is the Deputy Director of the Nuclear Power Institute of Ghana at the Atomic Energy Commission. Also uh, here with us earlier was Dr. Vincent Agbo Demigbe. He is manager of the localization and stakeholder support with the Ghana uh, Nuclear Power Institute that's located within the atomic energy structure. Talking about how important it is for us to choose nuclear power. Well, actually a mix of nuclear power and thermal gas, etc. Mm -hmm.